In the opening scene, we are introduced to the protagonist, Jake Green, who has achieved significant success in the world of gambling. After spending seven years in solitary confinement in prison, he was released two years ago. Despite his past accomplishments, he returned to the gambling world with no money and had to work his way up again. But currently, he is one of the most influential figures in the business, working alongside his brother Billy, who also serves as his assistant. In the next scene, Jake and Billy enter a casino owned by their adversary, Dorothy Matcha. Since Jake is known for never losing in gambling, the dealer denies him a table. Matcha, upon learning of Jake's arrival, insists on meeting him, disregarding his bodyguard Paul's advice. To access the upper floor of the casino, Jake must take an elevator, but he is hesitant due to his claustrophobia, resulting from nearly a decade of solitary confinement. However, after much consideration and support from his brother, he eventually takes the elevator. It's a stupid thing to be afraid of anyway. Later, he confronts Matcha, and the two engage in a game of gambling. Jake loses the first round deliberately, which gives Matcha a sense of false accomplishment. However, in the subsequent round with higher stakes, Jake skillfully wins, much to Matcha's dismay. Following this, Jake and Billy leave the casino with all the money they've won. Moments after their departure, the casino owner hires his top assassin, Sorter, to eliminate Jake, perceiving him as a great threat to the business. On his way out, Jake comes across a guy named Zack, who warns him that he is in danger and offers assistance, leaving behind his card. This time, Jake chooses to use the stairs, but he abruptly loses consciousness and falls down them. Now, he's afraid of stairs, too. Ironically, the card given by Zack consists of an instruction for him to take the elevator. Then, Jake is rushed to the hospital, where doctors conduct tests and advise him to consult the laboratory later for the results. Upon arriving back home, Jake Jake discovers a note on his doorstep, instructing him to pick it up. As he bends down to reach the note, he is ambushed by Sorter, who fires the first shot. This leads to a fierce shootout between his bodyguards and the attackers, putting Jake's life in grave danger. But fortunately, Zack intervenes and rescues Jake, revealing that he was the one who left the note. Zack then takes Jake to his partner Avi, who surprisingly knows a lot about Jake's background. He reveals something shocking, that Jake's past hospital reports indicate that he has a rare blood disease that can kill him within three days at most. Avi and Zack propose to shield him from Macha's threats and find a way to treat his illness only if he hands over all the money he earned from gambling over the past two years. With no viable options from conventional doctors, Jake reluctantly agrees and hands over his hard-earned money. Meanwhile, Sorter is distressed because it is his first time missing a target. Macha provides him with a second chance, also threatening to take his life if he fails. You're the most useful useful man in the world to me, but I will kill you. Throughout the journey, Jake's inner voice comes to life. It turns out he has been hearing this voice ever since he was imprisoned, and he is forced to obey it every time. Elsewhere, Avi and Zack disclose their true identities as loan sharks, intending to lend the money they collected from Jake. Jake, who is in no place to argue, accompanies them as they deal with their debtors. Eventually, Avi inquires about Jake's history with Macha. A flashback delves into Jake's past before his imprisonment imprisonment, revealing that Macha had three loyal associates known as the Eddies who carried out his illicit tasks. Initially, Jake was just a regular gambler on the streets until the Eddies asked him to be a card man for Macha. Jake played on Macha's behalf and won, but things took a violent turn when an opponent insulted him, leading to a shootout. As a consequence of the shootout, Macha lost money as well as his henchmen. In retaliation, the Eddies, who were loyal to Macha, murdered Billy's wife and threatened to harm Jake's niece as well. Following this, Jake was arrested and imprisoned due to his involvement in the violent incident. At present, Macha is trying to land a business deal with a wealthy and dangerous businessman named Sam Gold. However, Gold never shows up in person and always operates through his representative, Lily Walker, making him a mysterious figure. Lily cautions Macha about the severe repercussions if he disappoints or tries to deceive Gold. The deal involves illegal powder importation, which excites Macha, primarily due to the substantial financial gain it promises, but also because he loves putting powder in his bomb. In the next scene, Jake shares his prison experience with Avi and Zack. It turns out that he was given a choice between serving a regular 14-year sentence or seven years in solitary confinement. The prison was happy to release the prisoner early, so long as they become insane first. Expectedly, he chose the latter and was placed in a small cell between two other inmates, a con artist and a chess expert. He never saw the two of them were talked directly, but communicated through a shared communal book, which contains
and secret messages. The clever and dangerous duo of the chess expert and con artist taught Jake various techniques and skills of a perfect con through their cryptic messages. Although he learned a lot from them, he couldn't completely grasp the full extent of their communication. During his fifth year, the two prisoners planned an escape and agreed to take Jake with them, but they disappeared the very next morning, leaving him behind. The police couldn't locate them, as if they had vanished into thin air. After his release, Jake discovered that the escaped convicts had stolen all the money he had hidden outside the prison. They left behind a message stating, You can only get smarter by playing a smarter opponent. Over time, Jake applied the tricks he learned from them to become a gambling king as he is now. In the present time, Abby and Zach attentively listened to Jake's narrative without showing any immediate reaction. A few moments later, they mentioned that they have an important task to accomplish. The task involves stealing the powder that Macha was supposed to supply to gold. Later, the trio successfully completes the task, putting Macha in a lot of trouble. The latter becomes so worried that he is forced to seek assistance from a rival crime boss named Lord John, who agrees to sell him another batch of powder at double the market price. Desperate to save himself from gold's potential wrath, Macha reluctantly accepts the deal. The intense situation escalates when Avi, Zach, Jake, and their associates interrupt the deal-making process at the hotel. They successfully incapacitate everyone present and manage to steal the goods before Macha's henchmen can secure the powder. As a result of the deception, both Macha and Lord John suspect each other of treachery, leading them to conspire against one another, while the actual culprits evade suspicion. In the next scene, we see Avi and Jake engaging in a game of chess. Using the cunning strategies he acquired during his prison days, Jake outwits Avi every time. After this, he is taken to confront a debtor, as usual, but this time he is asked to shoot a man who didn't repay his debt on time. The voice in his head urges him to comply, claiming that it's not a big deal. But for the first time in his life, Jake resists the voice and refuses to shoot. He even attempts to fire at Avi when the man tries to retaliate, but the gun happens to be unloaded. Following this, he's knocked out with a blow to the back of his head. When Jake awakens the next morning, he finds himself back in bed, perplexed as to why he was spared. It is now the fourth day since the last health reports, and when he goes for a follow-up with the doctor, he is informed that he was simply misdiagnosed. Turns out, he's not going to die after all. After this, Jake confronts Avi and Zack, filled with determination to seek answers. Strangely, the voice in his head persists, suggesting that the duo is playing mind games with him. Much to Jake's surprise, Avi seems to have heard the voice as well. However, Avi clarifies that the voice is not actually his, but an opponent disguising themselves as a friend, adhering to the principles of a perfect con. Here, a revelation unfolds, exposing the mysterious and feared businessman man Sam Gold as an illusion instead of being an actual person. In reality, Sam Gold is a metaphor, camouflaged fear, ego, and evil residing within the minds of every individual. Despite leaving prison physically, Jake appears to have remained imprisoned by the imaginary Sam Gold ever since. Realizing that he has been manipulated by the voice, Jake engages in a fierce internal struggle to resist its influence. The voice urges him to end everything, including his biggest adversary, Mike. Matcha. However, Jake resists succumbing to pride and instead chooses to apologize to Matcha, defying the voice's sinister instructions. Throughout his mental battle, Matcha is also contending with his own inner struggles, driven by the voice. Jake's unexpected apology leaves Matcha bewildered as the voice insists that it's merely a mockery. Following this, Jake also chooses to face his claustrophobia by entering an elevator. Despite the elevator stopping midway and triggering his fear, he courageously fights and overcomes the voice's attempt to defeat him. Elevators are a stupid fear anyway. When the elevator finally opens, Macha stands before him, pointing a gun at him. Jake is unfazed by the threat, and his fearlessness surprises Macha, allowing his voice to take control of his actions. Macha fails to realize who the real Sam Gold is, and becomes consumed by the irrational fear that he will be hunted down by this fictional entity. The following day, Jake takes a bold step and makes a substantial donation to a charity in Macha's name, going against Sam Gold one more time. Later on, Macha appears puzzled by the media attention, but he gladly accepts the credit and recognition. Before long, he also discovers that it was Jake and his group who sabotaged his deal with Sam Gold earlier. Fueled by anger, he orders his men to find and kill Jake. However, the gangsters instead find Jake's brother Billy and niece Rachel at his home. They then subject Billy to torture and plan to abduct 
the girl. Meanwhile, the assassin Sorter also experiences a transformation similar to that of Jake. As a result of this, he decides to defy Macha's men and protect Rachel. Sadly, Sorter's act of courage leads to his death as one of the gang members ultimately kills him and abducts Rachel, taking her to Macha. Meanwhile, Avi and Zack escort Jake to Macha's casino. There, he plays chess against Avi and realizes that the latter was merely pretending to be a poor player and could have won at any time. Upon thinking deeply, Jake eventually understands that Avi and Zack are none other than the very prison inmates who betrayed him two years ago. And nobody saw this twist coming. Here, it becomes evident that the guys have fulfilled their promise to free Jake from a different kind of prison, not a physical one, but the confinement of his own mind. Avi and Zack also reveal that they didn't assist Jake out of affection, but because they represent his wisdom and higher self, counteracting Sam Gold, who symbolizes his fears. In the final scene, Jake goes to Macha, who has taken Rachel hostage and possesses both batches of stolen powder. Despite offering to return the powder, Macha seems lost and controlled entirely by the voice inside his mind. He places the gun on Rachel's head, hoping to provoke a reaction from Jake. When Jake remains composed, Macha becomes becomes infuriated. Eventually, the Sam Gold inside him screams in rage that turns into fear, making him realize that it will engulf him soon. Unable to comprehend that the return of the powder could save him, Macha succumbs to panic and ultimately commits the unthinkable, allowing Sam Gold to win. The movie serves as an illustration of the inner battle against negative thoughts, which can be overcome through determination. Each person carries their own Sam Gold, urging them to nurture ego and pride. The outcome depends on the individual's choice, whether to succumb to negative thoughts like matcha or to confront them like Jake. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.